Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with Terry Cohen, who is somebody that I've followed for a long time. And, and I, I'm not going to say long time. Don't say I'm gonna long, say, Matt. I'm going to say a, since I began my salon seven years ago. Okay, that's good. I've followed you. That way have, they can't guess how old I am in any way. Exactly. So <laughs> you're a big part of, um, you. I, I met you and I, was, I became aware of you through Paul Mitchell. But um, I, I worked for Paul Mitchell for 10 years and uh, followed Robert Cromines very closely. And I always thought it's not necessarily, you wanna learn from the, from the guy that you look up to, but you also wanna look at who he learned from, okay. right? And, and I know, I'm not gonna say he learned everything from you, but I've listened to Stephen Terry Cohen's CDs uh, many, many times driving to those classes and teaching for Paul Mitchell and learned, I, I guarantee without you, Steve and Robert, I could not have ran my salon at 25 years old. Oh, thank so, you. So um, now I want to talk about that because you you did put out those CDs a while back. Right. Um, and what have, so over the last seven years, I haven't really stayed connected with what you guys are doing. I do reference back to the CDs. What's going on with you now? Well, a lot. Okay. okay. First of all, uh, PSC turned 30... Uh, 33 years old. And PSC is your distributor. Yes. Steve started the company in 83. We've been with Paul Mitchell since day one. We represent four brands. We represent Davines since okay. a, a 2004 out of Italy. And in the last year, we took on three lines. So oh, we're wow. a house that only represents five brands. Okay. And the new lines that we've taken on are Ruzel, a men's line, which is a lot of they're fun. The guys, yes. yes. And it's so funny. Everyone knows them as the guys. Oh, right? yeah. They're awesome. And then we took on Flow, which we're really excited about. And then a, a wonderful brand called Z1 out of Italy, okay. out of Milan. It's oh, a milkshake and known ambition and some other brands. So we're thrilled with our with our mix. Okay. One of the things that we launched in 2015, in November, actually, we put in a 300-seat theater on site at our location. Really? Right. With a 35-foot stage and seven hairdressers can be featured on this runway stage or it could be just a runway okay and or it can be a business venue but it's 300 people and I don't have to set up and tear down anymore our team were thrilled with that because that drove us crazy and it was a team effort our company in the last five years we changed locations our staff did the complete build out okay our team really I sketched it and they built it and then we did the theater the same way. So oh, wow. we have some amazing, talented team members on staff. And so so this theater is housing education from the brands that you have mm-hmm. and all of that? Everything. Okay. We, um, we're pretty much full every, every Monday and Tuesday. We do our uh, advanced education for our customers. Okay. A lot of fee-based education there. We still do about 1,600 in-salon classes a year. The advanced education is, of course, going to focus on grooming and cutting and, and color formation and, and also updo styling, but also it's going to focus on how to service the guest and really understand what your responsibility is as a hairdresser. I mean, our number one responsibility is to create a repeat customer. Right. Number one. Right. What are the things that we have to do to ensure that they want to return and that it's definitely an experience for them? Most hairdressers are absolutely willing to go through the process of being uncomfortable with their hands, to learn how to be an expert right. with their shears and their tools and so on and so forth. But you also have to realize you have to be uncomfortable with your words right. and learn how to speak as well as your hands can produce great right. hair. Yeah, I think that's like one of the biggest questions that I get is was how do you, what questions do you ask, you know, those things. And, and that's all information that I grabbed from those CDs. We have know? 18 in production. We probably should do some more, but the information yeah. isn't it's so dated. Good. You don't, yeah. It's not dated. Yeah. And it's really, I, I worry about as our generations, new ones come in. Yeah. And uh, the social scene of the, having the phones in front of us and having that be our number one priority. The ability for us to communicate and connect is has been threatened. Right. And we're more committed to this screen and what it can say to me versus what to the human spirit right. and connecting with another individual. And as a result of that, because this job is entertainment, this job, yes, is technical is required. Right. But it's all about your ability to connect, have heart to heart conversations, create that hope and enthusiasm for that guest's new appearance or new look or whatever they need to do to feel more confident 
and it's all done with words and your ability to interact. Right. And if you can't do that, you're going to lose. Exactly. Yeah, we talk about it's all about relationships oh, and gosh, connecting yes. with the guest and, and, and the loss of that connection over time. Mm -hmm. Because I talk to John Harms a lot, and um, he was talking about retention rates and the fact that after six visits, your retention rates are like 10%, 8%. Why is and, that? And it's because of the relationship. You get or, comfortable. Or we get so comfortable in our relationships, we take them for granted. Right. Or we have too, get too many guests in our base that we can't give them their due attention. Which is something that we just talked about. Right. Pre-camera uh, on, um, which is something in my salon right now that, that um, we have uh, too many guests and not enough room. We're not fitting them in correctly. Um, so, and you said to um to stop taking new guests well here's what happens you know you've got to manage the traffic because you have to understand what capacity is in your business capacity right. when are we at capacity and because we have availability on our schedules like there's a 10 o'clock available there's an 11 o'clock there's a 2 30 we think we're not at capacity right. yet we have enough guests to be at complete capacity should they be scheduled properly looking at that rescheduling percentage, making sure we're managing the traffic and knowing when our guests are falling away from us. It's almost like I said earlier, it's like putting a square peg and asking it to fit in a round hole. It can't. Right. You have to know that what are your limitations and capacity. When we call a hotel and they say the hotel is fully committed tonight, it's because every room is being used. Right. When we say a salon is fully committed, it means every hairdresser has enough guests that they should be completely full. Right. If they're not, the hairdresser's the problem. They're not scheduling properly. Exactly. So how do you explain that to a hairdresser that maybe um, has enough guests, but they're not booking properly? I, I think um, we're afraid to ask people for their future business. Right. It's still really much a confidence issue. It's a confidence in saying, if you're not scheduling, I'm going to take that personally. If you're not scheduling, I must have done something wrong. No, it just means that you have to be in charge of the business relationship with that customer. Right. That's all it means. Yeah. We don't take that personally. We do our job. A customer should never have to speed us up. Right. Like saying, Matt, I mean, all right already. No, no. It's okay. I'd rather them do that than say, Matt, you never told me. Yep. Matt, you didn't say I needed this product. Matt, you never said that I needed to be in here every six weeks for a hair cut or my hair would fall apart. Right. Matt, you never said what the requirements are when you become chemically dependent. They should never have to ask us for the information that we deserve as their customer. Right. Right? Yep. True. And you have, um, so just to kind of let everyone know, so you are, are you speaking at, um, I know you're speaking tomorrow. Right. At the, uh, it's the PBA Beacon, right? Right. Which for is the, for students. For the young hairdressers that earned it. I believe there's 500 that earned their way here. Yeah, it's so cool to see. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And to, to know that, that they're going to have that time with Stephanie, Stephanie Kachowski. And my job tomorrow is to have Stephanie bring out her journey to them. Right. So they can see what's possible. Everyone wants success, but they don't want to honor the process. If Stephanie said, I had to do this and this and this to get here, people are going to go, well, I don't want that. Yeah. Well, guess what? Then you don't want where she's at today either. Yeah. Because everyone has a process of success. You have one. I have one. Robert has one. My husband has one. And there's many people that say, I don't want to do the fight like that. Right. Okay. You just made a decision then. Yeah. Right? Like people that ask, how do you find the time to do it? are the people that I automatically right away, like you wouldn't be asking that question necessarily if I feel like if you, if you're the type of person that's willing to work for it. Oh gosh, yes. You know? I mean, you if you walk up to someone and say, how did you get a body like that? And they say, <laughs> well, I'm in the gym six hours a day. Well, I just disqualified myself from having a body like that. Right. Right. Cause exactly. I don't have yeah. six hours to give. And I, I envy them that get up at four in the morning yeah. to go to the gym. God bless them. Yeah. That's not Terry Cowan. Right. However, my policies for me and my disciplines and my processes are ones that we chose as a family to get where we are today. Yep. So what are those going to be for you? Right. So what would you say? Um, I know that you agreed to sit down, which I really appreciate. I know that you have dinner oh, reservations. I was honored. So tell me, um, what do you want to put out there for people? You have uh, also schools. We have, so two, we have three schools. We do have a lot of um, young people that watch this uh, channel and also subscribe to American Salon. So 
Um, where are your schools located? We have one in Chicago on okay. the UIC campus. Which and then is my we favorite have, place in the world. We have one in Lombard. Yes. And both of those are, are great properties. Okay. And our first one is we bought a small boutique school in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, okay. Michigan in Escanaba. And that's a, that's a delightful smaller property that can house around 50 uh, future professionals at a time where okay. the other one's capacity is probably 250 to 275 comfortably. Okay, great. So, and that's, how do they find that information? Like if they want to look up the school or... Oh, they look can just up look up uh, John Paul Mitchell Systems okay. and you can look at Paul Mitchell, Paul the, Mitchell the School and then just search just it. search it. And awesome. we also have our distributorship. Okay. We are honored to be a distributor for the states of Illinois and Indiana. Okay. And seriously, if they want to pick up one of your CDs, can they still do that? Oh my gosh, yes. Is that possible? www.professionalsalonconcepts.com. Okay, and honestly, it's like, if you were thinking about, you don't even need to have a salon, because you even have a stylist version, right? Yeah, stylist version and owner's version. So definitely um, get that CD, because you will not regret any of that. And um, that's pretty much it. I want to talk about some books I'm reading right now. Okay. Please. Suggested reads. Okay. Awesome. First of all, for the owners that are listening today, I would recommend for you to pick up uh, Michael Gerber's book, The Entrepreneurial Myth. Okay. You should read that at least once a year. Go in, reread. I still read it every okay. year, at least once a year. And he talks about the fact that when people start businesses, it's usually a technician that's starting a business, not a manager, not an entrepreneur, right. usually the best technician. The best plumber says, hey, you know what? I'm the best plumber here. Right. I'm going to start my yeah. own plumbing business. Hairdresser, I'm the best hairdresser in here. I'm going to start my own salon. Yeah. Not realizing that the two other things that have to be in place is the entrepreneur, the visionary of what do I want this business to look like? How right. do I want it to run? What do I want it to do? And the manager that puts the, the ideas and the systems in place of the entrepreneur so the technician can do the job with ease. Okay. All right? Yeah. And so many times, hairdressers will stay in the technician role and forget about these two. Yeah. And that's when we start to crash and burn a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I also picked up some new books this year that become my favorites. Okay. I've read uh, Grit, G-R-I-T. That's a good one. And True Grit is about who's got the grit. Yeah. Just the grit, the gruttiest dirtiest grit to stay in there and fight the good fight to be successful okay what are you willing to do to have it all what are you willing to do and i've also picked up no excuses which is a great book okay. and also presence presence is a book that's all about do you have the presence to honor what you're doing when you walk in a room do you know your responsibility when you're a hairdresser? Do you know your responsibility when you walk into the supermarket to greet the people in the community? Because you want to be known, that's the great gal over there right. that loves her customers, loves what she does, loves what she does it, who, sh- who she does it for and who she does it with. To have presence, you have to put your voice out there and have a, a noise footprint. Hmm. And we can't do it on a screen. Right. We can't say, Hi, I love what I do. You have to ooze that out of you. Right. Yeah. Right? That's great. I'm going to link all those books. Do it. I'll do it in the description so people can easily get them. Oh, they're wonderful. And that's great. That's definitely great. My nephew right now is, um, I always talk about him, my sister's sister's son. And he's 16. Okay. And he's a heck of an athlete. All right. Heck of an athlete. He has an opportunity to play Division I ball if he manages his distractions. Okay, so what could a 16-year-old's distractions be? Could be girls. Right. Could be drugs. It could be steroids, someone coming up to him and saying, hey, you want to hit the ball farther? Try this. Right. It could be his grades. It could be not sleeping because he's playing video games. It could be his, his attitude of not understanding what his responsibilities are as a ball player. Um, I could go on and on. Right. Right? And, and in all cases... Cole's still a very young man. In many cases, I tell him this. I said, Cole, you're still a dork. At 16, you're still a dork. We all know at 16, we thought this thing life, we figured out, but we didn't know anything about it, right? Right. And I love him so much. And it's our job to direct him to say, not like that, like this. Yeah. This is in the way, and this is what you need to do. You're a great athlete. Don't let the distractions screw this up for you. Right. Same conversation can be had with a hairdresser right right yeah wrong boyfriend wrong girlfriend 
wrong extracurricular activities, um, not wanting to go to educational events, not wanting to learn beyond the first level, not surrounding themselves with the right people while they're working every day, being more committed to their phone than they are to being on the floor versus downtime, staying out of that back room. Those are all distractions. Yeah. And when we realize when we're not good to ourselves to get what the golden brass ring is, then we have to make shifts and adjustments. Right. They also have to work with someone that will bring out the greatness in them, not one that will just be their cheerleader. A cheerleader is great, but right. a coach will direct you over and over again. And that's our responsibility. You know, the older I get, I, I feel like, gosh, are Steve and I running out of time? Are we running out of time to make a difference? My voice is probably more curt. I'm probably not going to be as soft approached right? because I'm, I have such a desire to make it better for people. Right. And usually the only thing that's in the way is themselves. I'm, sh I'm sure as an owner you've witnessed that. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. Huh. I hmm. could literally talk to you all day. I could so talk I to appreciate you all day. <laughs> I know. We can do this again. That's what I like about it. We have to do it again. I would and love it. Next time I'm in Chicago, because my family, I grew up near Chicago. And uh, next time I'm in Chicago, I have to come see you guys. For Let's sure. do it. All right. Sounds good. Terry, thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Man. Thank you to American Salon for letting us sit down thank and you. start this conversation. And all of you guys, go get those books and go to, what's the website? PSC. www.professionalsalonconcepts.com. And pick up the CDs. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.